guys and welcome to my channel Beaks and Cheeks. Well, whether you have beaks or you have cheeks, this channel's for you. And today you're here because eggs are like liquid gold. So I'm going to go in depth the top reasons why eggs are so expensive right now. I will also go over the questions I still have even after all my research. And I'll briefly let you know if I think you can save money by raising your own flock. So why are eggs so dang expensive right now? Any good economist will tell you that an increase in price is driven by an increase in demand with a decrease in supply. But why are eggs so higher in demand right now and lower in supply? At first glance, you just think that inflation, everything is higher right now. We just went through a pandemic. We're in a recession. Everything is inflation. But eggs are exponentially higher than any other inflation rate right now. Why? Is it severe weather? While that may drive a factor, it is definitely not the top reason. Is it the pandemic and the labor shortages that we've had? That is in the equation, but again, does not explain why eggs are so much higher than everything else. Because there's labor shortages in everything. There is a seasonal component. Christmas just happened, Easter's just around the corner, so a lot of people use eggs in dishes when they're making Christmas dinner, and so many people use eggs to dye at Easter, but Easter and Christmas happen every year, so why is the demand so much higher now? The increase in demand is being driven by the inflammation of everything. So initially, animal protein was very expensive. Chicken was really hard to find, and when you did find it, it was way too expensive. So people were resorting to a cheaper protein source, which was eggs, because you could get a dozen for 99 cents. And at the same time that people were using eggs as a protein source, the supply went down. What happened to the supply? What happened to our eggs? Where have they all gone? Well, the number one reason that you'll find is the avian flu. The avian flu virus is known as the HPAI, highly pathogenic avian influenza. This is transmitted mostly through wild birds, through their feces, feathers, and direct contact with other avian species. The avian flu in 2022 was the deadliest on recorded history since 2015. The virus is highly contagious and lethal. In the year 2022, the virus was more lethal than ever because it was being seen in more wild species than it has before. Once a bird has contacted the virus, it is usually dead within 48 hours. It is highly contagious and usually spreads through the whole flock. Even if the virus does not spread through the entire flock, usually the entire flock is culled due to regulations. There were 50.54 million birds that either died or were culled because of the avian flu and the poultry industry in 2022. Now, while that number is a significantly high number, millions of birds, it only equated for 5% of the poultry industry. So a 5% decline in the industry really shouldn't increase our egg prices by <laughs> triple the price, should it? There are several factors in this. So at the same time that the avian flu was ravaging our community, the prices of everything were significantly going up. There was fuel and transportation prices going up. There, the feed of our chickens, the cost to feed them, was also going up. And that was due to the Russia war with Ukraine. Because Ukraine is one of the world's highest suppliers of sunflower seeds and a, makes a third of the world's wheat. These changes increase the cost for the egg producers and therefore it gets passed on to the consumers. Another thing that has increased the cost for egg production is the most recent cage-free restrictions. 20% of the United States is starting to implement cage-free regulations in certain states. That includes Colorado, California, Massachusetts, Washington, Oregon, Nevada, Arizona, Utah, Michigan, Ohio, and Rhode Island. As you may know, many of the egg industry, the chickens are kept in small battery cages. So the cage-free regulations 
are meant to stop selling eggs produced by hands in cramped spaces. Cage-free eggs sounds wonderful. When you think of cage-free eggs, you think of chickens just wandering the plains, collecting their own food, and just living a happy life. When in reality, cage-free regulations mean that the hen has to have a one square foot space for itself. That means that many hens are cram-packed inside of a small facility with just one square foot to their name. This increases aggression between the hens, it makes it harder to collect the eggs, and means more broken eggs with less production efficiency. Now, I am all for animal rights and I want our chickens to be cage-free, but when I say cage-free, I mean pasture-raised. One foot of floor space per hen is not enough. While these regulations are headed in the right direction, they do require more workers and they require more feed for the hens because they are expending more energy because they have a little bit more space to roam around. So therefore, the cost of eggs is going up with these cage-free regulations. And you can expect these cage-free regulations to spread to even more states as the years to come. But here is my remaining question. In my research, I found that it was 70% turkey farms that were affected by the avian flu the most. And that's why we saw the turkey prices so high around Thanksgiving. So why are eggs the most expensive right now if it's turkeys that are the most affected? And how are these wild birds transmitting the virus to our caged or confined poultry inside a facility? How are they coming in contact with wild feces, feathers, and birds? I believe that this research is still lacking. I could not find answers that sufficed my curiosity. The only thing that I can find it is probably being spread through workers. So we may need increased personal protective equipment for the workers in the poultry industry. Now with the increase in egg prices, you may be tempted to start producing your own eggs with a backyard flock. Is it worth it? Can it be more cost effective? I did a breakdown of what it costs me to feed my flock of eight ducks in a year. In theory, a duck can lay one egg per day. Same with a chicken. I have five females, so they could lay about 1,825 eggs per year if each of them laid an egg every day. That's about 125 dozen. That's a lot of eggs. However, both ducks and chickens don't lay year round. Most start declining their egg production at the fall equinox, which is around September 22nd, when the days begin to get shorter. The days begin to lengthen between January and February, and it begins to produce just enough light for them to increase egg production again. So that means there's about five to six months a year when hens are not producing eggs because there's not enough light and because they're molting. That is, unless you provide artificial lighting to your hens. But artificial lighting alters their natural circadian rhythm, it decreases their health overall, and it can actually decrease their longevity. So it's not recommended to provide artificial lighting in order to have year-round eggs. So if I have seven months of laying with five hens, that makes about a thousand eggs per year, about 85 dozen. Now I feed my flock Missouri waterfowl breeder feed, dried mealworms, and I also supply them with a calcium supplement of crushed oyster shells. Generally, I spend about one 50 pound bag of feed a month for the ducks. I buy one 10 pound box of oyster shells every four months and one 10 pound bag of dried mealworms every four months to feed my flock as well. Altogether, the cost of these items is just over $1,000. So if I'm getting about 1,000 eggs a year at full production and it costs me about $1,000 a year to feed my flock, that means I'm paying just over a dollar an egg. And if you can do the math, a dollar an egg per dozen is $12 a dozen. And unless you're in California, you're not paying that currently in the grocery store. Costs that are not included in this egg production are housing, water, bedding, heat, fresh greens, enrichment, your time and energy, vet bills, meds, and egg cartons. 
But I definitely do not want to discourage you from having backyard chickens or ducks because they are very rewarding. Not only will you be getting eggs, but you'll be getting entertainment, you'll be getting pest management, and you'll be getting free fertilizer. But before you run out and go getting your own chickens or ducks, there are some things to consider, some questions that I want you to ask yourself before you start your own flock. Will you free row them? Or you house them in a predator-protected coop and pen? How will you keep them safe from the avian flu? Are you mentally prepared to call a flock that's infected? Does where you live even allow poultry? Are you in it for the decade-long commitment or longer? Do you have a local avian vet? And are you willing to spend the money on vet bills for ducks or chickens? Are you willing or dedicated to do the research that it requires in order to raise poultry? And are you up for chores when you're sick or it's freezing cold outside? These are just some of the things to consider, and if your answer is yes to those, by all means, please start a backyard flock, because I love my ducks, and I wouldn't trade them for the world. If you enjoyed this video, Mary would like you to peck the like button. We'll see you next week. Where did you get this fuzzy? Do you need that? Or you have... Ow! Don't me woman why is it so windy today you're gonna be in this video let's both do a duck face she does it better